Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio here on Thursday, December 22nd, 2011, just three days before Christmas. Coming up tonight, we recap Impact, SmackDown, TLC, and Raw, and hopefully, and that's the key word, hopefully, we have our last interview scheduled of the year with indie pro wrestler, Mistress Belmont. So that's pretty much all we have coming up. And just to have an announcement here, there will be a Triple Threat Wrestling Radio next Thursday night. That is scheduled next Thursday night, last show of the year. Just letting people know here. Um. Also... Getting ready for the New Year's, January 5th. That's the first show of the New Year. Uh, so that's pretty much it, man. I'm definitely looking forward into talking about TLC. Should be a lot of fun. Jeff would join me as well. So just sit back, relax. For the next to last show of the year. And here we go. Here we go. Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio right here on itmiradio.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, it is December 22nd, 2011, just three days before Christmas. Hope everybody's having a happy holiday season. Right about now, I'm about to get Jeff on the line here just so we can get to the wrestling discussion. First 30 minutes, WWE. Last 30 minutes is TNA slash Impact. Uh, so right now, let me go ahead and get Jeff on here. Fozzie's joining us. We have the Patriots fan, Brownie Master, Dr. Myth Bastard, Jeff and myself in the chat room right now. You can join us in the chat room at www.itmiradio.com slash ttw. And I'm trying to get Jeff on the line here. I did press the call button. Just another case of Skype being the douche. What can I say? Skype being the douche. I clicked the call button on Skype and it's not going through. For some reason. So, uh, Jeff, I know you're in the chat room. I'm trying to get you on. So, um, just bear with me, all right? Oh, actually, that is you Jeff. Me? There you are. Oh, Skype m went through after all. What's going on, man? Nothing, man. It's all fucked up, man. You having problems with Skype tonight or what? I, I guess it was a slight hiccup. It was, right. a, it was a slight hiccup. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get to our recap of the evening. We start off with TLC from this past Sunday night. It was WWE's last pay-per-view of the year entitled Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. TLC took place in Baltimore, Maryland. You want to guess how many matches they have this past Sunday night? There were 10 matches. In a near three-hour pay-per-view. It's a lot of matches for a three-hour show, if you ask me. But I thought it was a really good uh, pay-per-view. What was your thoughts on the pay-per-view? What was your... There? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. What was your thoughts on the pay-per-view this past Sunday? I liked it, man. I thought it was really good. I thought it was go uh, pretty good as well. Um, all the championships were on the line. Uh, there was Carnage. There was Ricardo Rodriguez fell 20 feet into a uh, table. There were also a um, CM Punk got handcuffed. Not twice. once, but twice. And yet he yeah. still won the match. I mean, I don't know Daniel if he... Bryant comes out of freaking pins Big Show and takes the belt from him. Yeah, Big Show, I mean, nine years... Since he last won the world championship, he beats Mark Henry, 
and before he can celebrate he gets ambushed and ddt through the uh the chair mm -hmm. and then daniel bryan's music pops and then the rest is history um this is the same guy who said i'm not going to cash it in until uh wrestlemania okay right sure whatever. yeah <laughs> so yeah michael cole that's his worst nightmare come true Oh, and, and to make matters worse for one Michael Cole, that's not the only bad thing happened for him. Um, A certain Broski won the United States champion, Zack Ryder. He finally... How about that? He finally <laughs> did it. And um, it was a pretty good match to start off the pay-per-view. All, all belts changed hands except for two. Yeah, the tag team titles and the Divas Championship. Hell, and the championship, too. The one with Punk. Uh, yeah, and Punk, yeah. Yeah, so Punk, Phoenix, and Airborne successfully retained their belts. Oh, and uh, Cody Rose, too. Almost forgot about him. Nah, he's a nobody. <laughs> well, he's the Intercontinental Champ. As of right he's now, as of right now, he's the longest running champion right now. Now that he's Dolph Ziggler is no longer U.S. champion. He's he a nobody. <laughs> I mean, Booker T, he showed that he still got it. He showed a, a lot better than Kevin Nash, that's for sure. Kevin Nash looked like a freaking moron wrestling. I mean, you know that, right? Kevin Nash, I don't know what happened to the guy. I don't know what he did before the match, or I don't know if he had a match before, uh, yesterday, on the day prior. But, man, he looked bad. And, and Triple H tore him up. He tore him up. The, the 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 sledgehammer, and the and onto the legs. And according to WWE.com, he's gonna be out of action for six weeks, with multiple injuries. Which means, it looks like you won't be seeing Nash at the Warrior Wumble, uh, in come January. So he's out of that equation. Uh, WWE created for you, Kenny. That. Don't like continuing. Oh, and uh, Cody and the IC titles are nothing. I mean, uh, last time I checked, Intercontinental titles is one of the most important titles in WWE history. Sure, the title of uh, the they, Cody Rhodes changed the uh, title a little bit, gave it a makeover or whatever, but Cody Rhodes the real deal. I mean, he, he, he don't talk that much. He's not entertaining, but when he's in that wing, he, he gives it all he has. So, I don't like Cody Rhodes, but the kid stepped up this past Sunday. Um, Other matches, Wendy Orton defeated Ray Barrett. And I said it on this show last week that if whoever wins that match should be in line for the World Heavyweight title come... uh next month in Royal Rumble. But now with Daniel Bryan winning, that changes everything because Big Show got a rematch. Mark Henry has a rematch. So between Barrett and Orton, they're going to have to wait in line just a little bit longer. And uh, congratulations, Daniel Bryan. After 10 years in the indie circuit, he finally wins his first big title. He's a former U.S. champion. Now he's a current world heavyweight champion. And how about what happened this past Monday, Jeff? Punk, Brian, and uh, and Ryder just kick off the show together. I mean, these th three guys came from the underground. They came from the indie circuit. They came from, I guess you call them internet darlings in the indie circuit. And to come a long way. And to be champions in the WWE in the big leagues. So, thing, yeah. So, Zach, and especially, you know, Zach Ryder, he ought to thank a guy who wasn't even at TLC. That would be John Cena because he the reason that he got that one more shot at the U.S. title and he took advantage of it. Right. And it looked like that match could have gone either way. But once Vicky Guerrero got ejected from ringside... The advantage went to Ryder. So, um, Zack Ryder went from an afterthought to YouTube sensation 
and now he's won his first singles championship. Uh, also, Sheamus defeated Jack Swagger. Triple H defeated Kevin Nash. Um, Big Show, if you see his reaction, and you know Josh, Mash Josh Matthews was pushing him. Like, come on, man. You know you upset. He act like, oh, congratulations, Daniel Bryan. But no. Come on. Let's be real. If, if it took you nine years to win a world championship and then have it taken away with you in 45 seconds, then uh, I don't know what else to say. Big show. And... It's bad enough Daniel Bryan had to deal with Mark Henry. Now you got to deal with Big Show. Yeah, good luck trying to hang on to that belt, D. Bryan. Good luck trying to hang on to that belt. And I, I like the main event, Punk and uh, Miz and Darren Rio, how they use all three portions, all three uh, weapons, the tables, the ladders, and the chairs. And as I was saying, Punk got uh, handcuffed twice. That was one point that he had to pretty much rip almost an entire turnbuckle. <laughs> ring, the ring came apart again. Yeah, wink. Well, that was that wasn't you know he had no other choice. Otherwise, he would have lost the title. So That's he. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Um, I guess Park must have been a tech a uh, technician or something. He must have used a lot of tools when he grows up. I mean, when he was young. Otherwise, <laughs> either Miz or Del Rio would have walked out as champion. So, uh, it was a great pay-per-view, and uh, it was a great way to end the pay-per-view portion of 2011. So, now they got the Warrior Rumble coming up in January. It's a lot of unanswered questions for WWE heading into 2012. Um, but this past Monday, let's get to this past Monday. Uh, like I said, we have Punk Wider and uh, and Punk Wider and Brian kicking things off. It was they were at Philadelphia, which is home, the birthplace of ECW. Uh, so there was a lot of ECW chants here and there. Um, as of right now, there is no match scheduled for the Royal Rumble. They're probably gonna start making some matches come January, but um, just sit back and relax, I guess. Uh, according to Fozzie, they're going to bring it back as a 30-man Warrior Rumble. Now, this past January, it was 40 men. So, I'm guessing that was just the one-time deal. And I hope that's the case because the 30-man Warrior Rumble is one of those things, if it ain't break, don't fix it. It's perfect just the way it is. 30 guys, you know, one wing, 60 minutes. I mean, don't need 40 more people. That's like trying to add more teams into the NCAA men's tournament. It just keep it the way it is. So I'm I'm happy that WWE decided to uh, have decided to keep it, bring it back to the 30 man uh, Warrior Rumble. Uh, so yeah, I like the 30 man a lot better than the 40 man. And for those who don't know, when the Warrior Rumble first started back in the 19 80s or 1990s it started off as 20 guys and then after a few years it became 30 guys and now they moved it to 40 last year now they're bringing it back to 30 so just keep it the way it is you know i, I understand everybody wants air time but for jeez sakes it's just the warrior rumble and it's not like every single person from the wwe roster is going to be at the warrior rumble anyway there could be two, three people that you haven't seen in WWE in a long time. Just like what happened in January with Kevin Nash and Booker T. You know, what a what a year for those two guys. Kevin Nash always brags about having the loudest reaction at the Warrior Rumble. Well, he ain't getting that much of a reaction at all. Uh, so, yeah, Santino almost won it. That's the key word, Andrew. He almost. So, you know, everybody's been talking about it uh, from last week and now on to this week. Kane. John Cena won an exclamation on whether the slamming incident was a accident or not. 
And I guess John Cena got his answer this past Monday night. So it looks like they might lead to Cena versus Kane at the Royal Rumble. Oh, and those two for sure will be in the Royal Rumble match. Um, but first, interrupting him against Mark Henry. And now, you take out the guy's shirt. Hey guys, is Finley going to come back or MVP? I did see MVP's Twitter page the other day, and he wouldn't rule it out. But as of right now, he's just wrestling in Japan. And I think he's completely fine wrestling in Japan. Yeah, he's uh he got a good deal. He's out there and I don't see him um going back to WWE anytime soon. As for Finley, you know, he's been working um he was like an agent before WWE let him go. So, you know, that may be up for discussion as to who are some of the surprises that's going to be in the 2012 Royal Rumble? And another big question is who is coming on January 2nd, 2012? You've been seeing the promos. You've seen students in the classroom sitting on a desk. Uh, there's a little boy. There's a, a boy and there's a girl with red hair. Uh, I mean, it could be anybody. People are saying that it's Chris Jericho. But Chris Jericho already confirmed on Twitter that it's not him. He's going to be in Hawaii on January 2nd. Well, Monday Night Raw Super Show is going to be at uh, Tennessee. Uh, so, I we can rule out Chris Jericho. But who is this person that's coming? And I, I saw some things that were interesting. When Lila made her return to the Slammies last week, I saw a petition on Twitter that they wanted a Beth Phoenix and Natalia versus Lita and Trish Stratus at WrestleMania. You know, why not Divas of the Past taking on Divas of the Present? Uh... Is it the un that would probably be too obvious if that was the Undertaker? It's got it can't be Undertaker. It's got to be someone else. Uh, I don't have a clue. Normally, when WWE does these promos, we kind of figure it out already. But they're doing a real good job keeping the keeping the suspicion up there, just keeping the people guessing. You know, as to who is coming on January 2nd. It could be anybody. Uh, it has to be someone who has a dark personality. Someone, it's got to be a bad guy. It's got to be someone who's going to who's gonna immediately get a push right away from the get-go. It's got to be a bad guy. It's got to be someone that's going to get that push right away. Um, Jericho did something similar with the last time he was not returning. If you do your research, the words they use in promos and lyrics songs by Fozzie. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I'm guessing either lyrics or the name of the songs by uh, Chris Jericho's uh, group. Um, Chris Jericho... I think he's too caught up wanting to be an entertainer. He wants to do other things. You know, but you never know. Chris Jericho, he's not known for someone having a dark personality. I mean, he could he could be cocky. He could be arrogant. He has that soft voice talking about being the best in the world. It has to be someone who's dark. It's got to be bad guy it's got to be someone that's going to get a push right away so i mean it could be anybody at this point it could be anybody yeah all only thing jericho has not done is the dark personality yeah so <laughs> the great Kali. uh i don't know about that one 
great colleague. You could barely understand the guy. It's got to be someone that's going to speak English. So I don't think that's the great colleague. <laughs> you can rule him out. It's got to be someone with a dark personality. It's got to be someone who speaks English. Kali doesn't speak English that very well. <laughs> so it's got to be someone, dark personality, someone who has just someone, just somebody. But I don't think it's Kali. Someone who's dark and someone who speaks English. Who's, 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 um, who speaks English very well. So let's begin to um, check this out. ESPN's Robert Flores. He does Sports Center on ESPN. He did a review on Stone Cold Steve Austin's new DVD, which is entitled The Bottom Line on the Most Popular Superstar of All Time. It came out about a couple of weeks ago. I think it came out on a Tuesday after Thanksgiving. It's been out for about a month now. Uh, it's, it's an in-depth look into Steve Austin's career from WCW, ECW, uh, yeah, and uh, WWE, of course. So, check it out. The review is out there on WWE.com. Uh, he did a real good job on it. If it isn't Chris Jericho, it could be HBK returning as a heel. Oh, it could be Batista. Yeah, interesting. Uh, that's a good that's a good possibility. I think Batista will fit that dark personality just fine. You know, he could be a big strong built dark personality guy. Uh as for Shawn Michaels, I don't believe a lot of wrestlers that they say I'm done wrestling for good. But I certainly believe in Shawn Michaels when he said he is done for good. I mean, the last match he had was a great match at WrestleMania against The Undertaker. That should be a lasting impression. Everybody wants their last match to be on a good note. Every great wrestler. So I believe Shawn Michaels when he say, yeah, this is it for me. I'm done. I'm not coming back. Uh, but, you know, you never know. You never know who it is. Uh, January 2nd could not come quick enough. We got two more Mondays before we find out who it really is. But I guess for the time being, the guessing, the debating continues. Um, it's going to be interesting 2012. As for a lot of superstars waiting to get that that push or whatever and for some reason my browser keeps getting something about browser crashing but yeah I still see the chat room just fine so I'm just ignoring it as I go along with this I have not heard about Shaq Andrew is it wrestling related all I know is he's gonna be doing NBA on TNT <laughs> it could be Dr. Myth. <laughs> Dr. Myth sounds like a dark personality name if you think about it. <laughs> Minus the kid, if if done right, could work. <laughs> uh, Jeff, are you still here with me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, people are getting in and out the room. I just saw you out the room. I wonder what happened. Uh, uh, my shit over here is crashing. No biggie. Mm -hmm. It's the only show of the week, so no biggie. Oh, Shaq said he wants to wrestle Big Show at WrestleMania. That's absurd. Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> wants to wrestle Big Show at WrestleMania. Now, they did have a face to face confrontation before when Shaq was guest hosting. I think that was back in 2009. That was 2009. So I will be shocked. Now this ain't the first time sh uh, that uh, Big Show had a um, WrestleMania match with a non-wrestler. Of course, he had that WrestleMania 
match against the Japanese sumo wrestler. And then there was with Floyd Mayweather, who, by the way, will be kicking off his new year behind bars. 90 days of some abuse towards an ex-girlfriend or something like that. Um... So yeah, Shaq wants to be part of WrestleMania. Now, it is going to be in Miami. And he used to play for the Miami Heat when they won a championship. So maybe that's up for the... Maybe that's up out there. Maybe that's just a suggestion for the WWE. But I'm if I think about it... You remember Big Show said he wanted to face Kevin Nash in one more match. He said it right after the Warrior Rumble this year. So that's my obvious prediction. Maybe Show versus Nash. Battle of the big men. Battle of the remaining big men. See how that goes. Uh, wonder if Mayweather would be kicking his New Year off. Avoiding having people of his... <laughs> Oh, man. Everybody's killing me with her, man. Uh, look. I guess we're not going to have... I guess we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. It's hard to have the, uh... The Mayweather Pacquiao fight when Mayweather can't even stay out of trouble. It's just that difficult. How hard is it to not to, to stay out of trouble? That's all I'm saying. Uh, coming up a little bit later, we'll recap Impact. And um, next Thursday's show, I'm going to be broadcasting from Kentucky. After nearly six, seven months being in Georgia, I will be moving to Kentucky next week. Either Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So... Yeah, this is very rare on my last broadcast. So when are you leaving? I'm leaving either next Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, cool. Next Tuesday or Wednesday. Nice. For what I know, uh, my sisters are here. Well, at least they're on their way here. They just took a plane this time. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be headed to Frankfurt. So I will be back. I will be living with my sisters. Uh, they have an apartment already, so they just letting Big Brother in, moving in. So, very you exciting. Your bedroom or are you sleeping on the couch? Uh, it's a different apartment, and at this point, I really don't care. <laughs> I don't care if I sleep on the couch or the floor. I just want a place in Frankfurt. And that's what I'm getting. So, uh. There you go. <laughs> um, there's two of them, Fozzie. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and it's good because I really haven't been talking to my sisters that much, but ever since they moved to the to the apartment, so it's a, it's a chance to get caught up, get caught up with the family, you know, and um. I get a chance to go check out some Ohio Valley Wrestling shows, which is the home of TNA's developmental system. Yeah, so OVW, it's going to be interesting for what OVW and uh, TNA has in store. Who's going to be the first person for OVW moving up to TNA? First male or female? <laughs> Uh, all sisters are loud and speak too much. You know, the the good thing about this move is that you don't have to hear dogs in the background. That's a big thing. So no more dogs barking in the background for me. Uh, come 2012. So, hey, I love my sisters, okay? You know, I don't care if they're loud or not. They, they're family, you know? That's just what it is. Uh, next week's show is going to be a year-end review show. Uh, look back at the uh, top WWE and TNA moments of the year. I've already found an article of the top 10 WWE moments in 2011. 
So I just got to find me a top 10 or something like that for TNA, and then I'm all set. All right. Again, a Skype message here. Uh, we're going to get to the t uh, TNA side of things in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to uh, the TNA. Because we don't have an interview tonight. No interview tonight. I, I thought we'd get one more before year's end, but obviously that's not the case. So I got 27 minutes of TNA talk. As you know, last week, uh, actually the last pay-per-view final resolution, it was Jeff Hardy versus Jeff, Jeff Hardy versus Jeff Jarrett. The stipulations are if Jeff Hardy were to win, then one of the Jarrett's gets fired and he gets a guaranteed TNA World title opportunity at Genesis, which is the uh, next pay-per-view, the January pay-per-view. If Jeff Jarrett wins, then Jeff Hardy is out of TNA for good. <laughs> so, Jeff Hardy goes on to win the match. And, and I do want to point out that Sting was handcuffed with uh, Jeff Jarrett's wife, Karen. Just to make sure she doesn't interfere. Just so she don't uh, get involved too much. So Jeff Hardy goes on to win the match. So he now earns himself a, a title opportunity at a Bobby Roode for the TNA World Heavyweight title. And then it was announced last week on Impact that both Jarrett's, Jeff and Karen by Sting, has been fired. <laughs> And yes, it is true. Sting and Cameron were handcuffed at the final resolution pay-per-view. That is true. They were handcuffed. That was Sting's idea, by the way. And Sting's been, you know, Sting has been taking charge. Dixie Carter, she's in charge charge. But Sting's in charge right now. And Andrew's... <laughs> Everything just goes right back to TNA wing looking like SmackDown. I mean, who cares what the wings look like? Who cares what the wings look like? Around the time TNA tried to replicate the WWE Attitude Era. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm a WWE fan first and then I'm a TNA fan second. And I do get that TNA is trying to be too much of WCW. Getting old wrestlers who have passed their prime. I get that. Uh, so yeah, uh, both Jarrett's have been fired. That means Tracy Brooks will be in charge of the knockouts division. But I'm guessing the, the Jarrett's, this being a storyline... They're going to take us some time off. Uh, so, uh, then uh, TNA got this tag team tournament going on. Uh, Gail Kim has the women's title, the knockouts title, and the knockouts tag team title. So, yeah, there's a lot of old people out there. I get that. You know, but you got, now that they have joined forces with OVW, you know, maybe OVW can get some new faces in there and start working on new talent. That's to me, that's been the big problem. Is that they too caught up trying to get recycled WWE talent, and that they too they don't they don't even try to make new stars. They don't try to make new talent. But now that they join forces with OVW, they get a chance of doing that. I mean, they've always had a training. But they never had a developmental system so that up and coming wrestlers can start up there and then work their way up to the TNA roster. <laughs> you know, that's a good one, Dr. Myth. That's not TNA's fault. Florida is a retirement home. <laughs> you know, that that's a good one. That's a good one, Dr. Myth. Um so right now, uh, that's pretty much all I have.
to say. Now that OVW is joined forces with TNA, maybe they can start making new talent now. And you know what? Another problem is advertising. They 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 not that big of a brand the way that WWE is. WWE say what you want about their wrestlers and stuff, but they do a great job building their promoting themselves all over the place. They do this whole anti bullying thing. They doing make a wish. They doing they having uh, wrestlers making appearances on other uh, TV shows. They are a brand. And I guess that's why people are not that happy with WWE because they ban the word wrestling. They don't want to be labeled as a wrestling company. They want to be a sports entertainment. But then at least you got people like CM Pump that doesn't lose fact of it. You know, them being, him being a pro wrestler. That's what you are, WWE. You are a wrestling company. People pay tickets to see you wrestle. Um, and, and everyone's still trying to predict who's going to be at the uh, January 2nd. It's definitely not Kamala due to his uh, health. Uh, uh, so, condol thoughts and prayers go out to him for a speedy recovery. Um. I read WWE wants to be known as a life improvement company when WWE Network opens. Now they're just going overboard. Just stick to being a wrestling company, please. You know, the sports entertainment. You know, I, I, can, I can understand why a lot of wrestling fans are mad at WWE. They're trying to step away from the wrestling thing. They still a wrestling company. They still wrestle at the end of the day. Because that's what they are labeled on. That's what they are labeled as. So. So yeah. WWE Network's coming in 2012. Uh, they don't. I'm guessing. They're going to have it right in time for Wrestlemania. <laughs> so. You know. I don't know what Vince doing. Or what the Kevin Dawn or the rest of those guys, they heading into 2012. Two things needs to happen. They got to get the Divas some better storylines and better storylines. And they need to get better storylines and longer matches. And did you not see what Alicia Fox did? God bless the woman. I love Alicia Fox, but girl, she messed up. She messed up on that one. And did you not see a picture of Beth Phoenix with a big old knot on her head? <laughs> she, I think it was posted on her Twitter page. That was a big old knot. That was a big old knot on her head. Talking about pin up strong. More like pin up knot head. That was a big old knot. You know what? <laughs> And I, and I hear a lot of these wrestlers and wrestling fans giving Alicia Fox a lot of crap over it. You know, I'm a wrestling fan. And I will say this. Wrestling wrestlers are just like the rest of us. They are human beings. They make mistakes. They have slip-ups every now and then. They botch every now and then. You can't try to be perfect every single match because if you do a botch is bound to happen maybe that's why Sin Cara didn't have a good year too caught up trying to be perfect maybe too caught up trying to be the next way Mysterio I don't know but they're human beings they make they they botch every now and then I guess that's the that's the wrestling term for messing up they botch uh <laughs> Andrew loves the name Alicia Fox. If Vince and WWE keep going the way that they're going, Vince will be the sole reason WWE goes bust. Uh, they won't. It's a weird one business. Sooner or later, WWE will go bust. You know, that's what people have been saying about WWE for quite a while. 
but WWE, it is a. I will. I will say this: they do a great job promoting themselves. They do a great job branding themselves. They do a good job doing more things than wrestling. I like the anti, the be a star campaign, and I like the. Uh, and I also like the be a star. I like the make a wish foundation. I like all that stuff, you know. I, as a way, it's it's, a, it's business. It's all about business. And sometimes you do business things that, that may not be popular. I mean, this is the same Vince McMahon who's trying to have a football league called the XFL, you know. And that could have just been a football league, but yet he's trying to get wrestlers featured. As as far as I know, they, you know, it's business. Like like Booker T likes to say, it's business. Um, tonight on Impact, Tara takes on Brooke Tessmacher, former WWE Divas. Then you got a wild card tag team tournament. Check this out: Eric Young teaming up with ODB, taking on Shannon Moore and uh that dude from Mexican America. Uh, AJ Styles and Kazarian takes on RVD and Christopher Daniels. Tony Nese takes on Zenny Iron and the best of three. And main event, Hardy and a partner to be named taking on Bobby Roode and Bully Ray. So I'm very excited about 2012. There's a lot of question marks for WWE and TNA. How's things going to fare out between TNA and OVW? Are they going to be on the same page? I mean, OVW helped build a lot of great talent with WWE. Can they do the same thing? Does the talent that's in OVW, is that gonna, is, could they end up being what WWE is to, TN, uh, what WWE is to OVW? Uh, or should I say OVW is to WWE? Can they can they start building talent? That should be the top thing on TNA's list. Built new talent. Built new talent. And for me, for WWE, things to, to, to improve is improve Divas Division and Tag Team Division. You got Air Boom. You got Epico and Primo. You got the Usos. I like to see more tag team matches in the WWE. I love Air Boom. I'm a fan of Air Boom. I like that match this past Sunday at TLC. They may have a good thing coming, but they just need maybe two, three more teams, and then the tag team division will be in good shape. Divas, as far as I'm concerned, they just better hope that Karma comes back the, the same way that she looked before she got pregnant. And they better hope, and, and there has been rumors that a former WWE diva may be on the verge of coming out, coming back. Maybe Trish Stratus, maybe Lita. You know, Lita could sure need some money, you know, being in jail and stuff. So, I say as far as what needs to improve. For TNA, new talent. Don't keep trying to rely on former WWE superstars. And as for WWE, Divas Division, and Tag Team Division. But since people, it's like people care more about the Tag Division. If they are that confident about the Tag Team Division, then, you know, get more teams. Now, you know, Air Boom, Primaco, and Epico, the Usos, that's, that's pretty much your only Tag Teams you have. And Usos are from Raw, Primo and Epico on SmackDown, and Air Boom is on Raw. Alright, I'm looking at more stuff for the chat room. Far as he goes on to say, I say WWE won't because I know as someone who studied business, it will only go bust if everyone in the family dies and there's nobody to want it. It doesn't work that way. Business funds on people making good business decisions then they would cease to exist you know say what you want about WWE but I think it's a well oil machine they regardless of the lack of the tag team division and the lack of the divas division 
everything else is on point. The heavy rates, the big stars. It's going to be interesting to see what's next for Nuke, for guys like Zack Ryder. Dolph Ziggler had a big year. I mean, Dolph Ziggler has been in some really good matches. Uh, he may... I, don't be surprised if he's in the hunt for a WWE title. You know, people will say maybe Vicky holding him back. I don't know. I mean, he's got the hashtag heel. You know, he's getting <laughs> he's getting his own merchandise. So, we'll see what happens. It should be quite a 2012, I'll tell you. Um. So, here's what I have right now. I have the Rockettes, Tiffany, Wox, and Waxy coming back to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio on January 5th. And I have a uh, wrestler from New Jersey named Kimberly. She's coming on January 19th. So I'm still working on the interview bookings for 2012. Um, and I'm going to be working on a new segment called Where Are They Now? Focusing on old school wrestlers. Um, and as for TNA, you know, people say, well, Hulk Hogan was supposed to put TNA right where it's supposed to be, and yet their ratings don't change that much. People really have high hope that TNA is going to surpass WWE. Well, in order to do that, you got to do what you got to do better than 0 0.6 or 1.0 rating. WWE does 2 or 3.0 every week. You know, you, you the only way to start to, to surpass is the ratings. Because that's what matters the most, right? That's why WCW had a good one against WWE until they fell apart. They had a good one, and then the ratings start to flop, and then they fell apart. So... Vince will buy TNA. <laughs> that will be that will be crazy if he buys ECW, WCW, and TNA. Then what? You get Wing of Honor. You know, Wing of Honor is good, but they don't have the advertisers and and, pro, and sponsors and stuff. I say Wing of Honor got just as good as wrestling as TNA does, if not even better. And it's got wrestlers that you may not even heard of. The only wrestlers you may have heard of was Charlie Hawes and Shelton Benjamin. World Greatest Tag Team. I did, by the way, interview the Charlie's wife, Jackie, from Tough Enough last year on Chillin'. Um, WWE only bought WCW trademarks and video library, not the company itself. That is true. That is absolutely true. You are absolutely correct, Dr. Myth. You know, as far as if people thought that WCW was going to be a brand or whatever, then that's not happening. Once you beat your competition and once you own their trademarks, it's all fair as game. So, yeah, <laughs> TNA better get it together. They better start making new talent. They better get new talent. And the ratings better get up. Or they, they're never going to surpass WWE. You got to start off with the ratings first. Ratings were all dandy when Hogan started coming. And then the ratings started to decline. So, I don't see WWE falling apart. But TNA needs to get things going in 2012. People got high hopes for it. And yet, not a whole lot of people watches it. Look at the ratings. Not all that dandy. It's not all that good. It may be good in certain countries, but it's not good here in America. And they are an American company. So it's WWE, an American company. You know... You can have the highest, you can have higher ratings in other countries than WWE, but if, but not here in America. Sorry, don't care too much. <laughs> Andrew goes on to say that 
<laughs> Lost my hopes with TNA back in 2008. Um, as for the anti John Cena t shirt, well, John Cena mentioned it on his Twitter page that he was against it, then he doesn't care. Anti shirts away, I don't care, says John Cena. He doesn't care. Look, he's been he's been dealing with this whole hating thing since day one. So why not? And what he did at the Slammies and what he, he's turned the Fruity Pebbles negative into a positive. You know, that's he, Cena can make fun of himself at times, and which he does. I wish other wrestlers would do that. Not take themselves so seriously. So, <laughs> you know. I want to see Punk make fun of himself, or, or The Rock, or some other guys make fun of themselves. Not take themselves so seriously. So, it's going to be quite a 2012, so I, I will say that. Um, So, I'm hoping I will be leaving. I will be uh, living in Kentucky uh, I will be moving out Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And if that's the case, there will be a triple threat wrestling radio next week. Next Thursday. Uh, WWE did not buy WCW company at all. They would have inherit lawsuits and contract disputes. If that's true, then it's considered a merger and not buying the rights. All I know is... They got some sort of WCW. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting. They wouldn't be having, showing old school matches and WWE classics. Find it interesting. Wouldn't it technically be two networks for WWE? Now the WWE Classics is more of a pay per view network. This will be this WWE network. Will actually be a channel. For people to see. It's not no pay-per-view or anything. This is an actual channel. Kind of like Oprah. It's, a, it's an actual channel. So I'm very anxious. They got the Legends House. They got a lot of things in the works. Uh. So yeah, next Thursday should be a lot of fun. I want to, uh, as we get near the end of tonight's show, I want to thank all the wrestlers that we have interviewed this year. I want to thank ITM, uh, <clears throat> every single wrestler that we have interviewed. Thank you so much. It's been fun. There have been laughs, some insight, and perspective. I hope y'all enjoy the wrestling interviews as much as I have. Um... WWE just brought WCW trademarks, copyrights, video library, and some contract to buy a company. You need to buy the shares or stock in a merger is a mess in its own right. Speaking of WCW, I'm sure a lot of you guys and girls, well, all of you are guys in the chat room, may have seen the picture I posted on Facebook yesterday. It was a picture of myself and Diamond Dallas Page. And I want to talk a little bit about that. That picture was taken a few months ago at a wrestling show called Georgia Championship Wrestling at Augusta. That's the second time in about a year I met Diamond Dallas Page in person. And I'll tell you, that World Heavyweight Championship, it is heavy. It is, it is a heavy championship. It weighed a ton, if you ask me. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, he is great. He's a cool guy. Um, he was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. You know, when WCW started to go, uh, blow up. So, yeah, um, the, that World Heavyweight Championship belt, super heavy. And, uh, and for... And yes, uh, WWE or WCW, they give you a replica version of that championship that you won for yourself. You're not going to actually have the title. 
you know, that they currently have. You're going to have a replica or a copy of the exact title that you win. So every single wrestler that wins a championship for WWE or TNA, you get a replica. You get a copy of that belt. I think we may have uh, lost Jeff. He was away from the chat room. He said he'll be back. And I haven't heard a peep from him. <laughs> Kenny, you lucky rat. I'm going to assume you meant lucky rat bastard. I think Jeff would be proud of that saying. Um, so, yeah, Diamond Dallas Page, great guy. Very great. Um, very cool dude. It was cool to hang on to that championship belt. <laughs> Made me feel like a champion for a split second. Made me feel like a champion. You never know how heavy those championship belts are in, until you actually hang on to them. And that was the World Heavyweight Championship belt. I think that World Heavyweight, Cha World Heavyweight Championship belt is one of the heaviest. And by hanging on to that belt... I was right. That belt is super heavy. Again, I want to thank all the wrestlers that's been interviewed in 2011. Looking forward to many more interviews <coughs> in 2012. Sorry, it's all right, man. They were doing Hanukkah inside. They grabbed me to go get my Hanukkah gift. Ah, happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Yeah, they gave me a uh, Chargers jersey. I got a Lorenzo O'Neal Chargers jersey. Nice. Yeah, cool. Well, that about does it. This is the only, well, actually, it's my only show of the week. And uh, this is it. We're done. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Triple Threat Wrestling Radio will be on next Thursday. No chilling on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. That show will be back on January 7th. Back at its regular schedule time, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um... This is my last show here in Georgia, so sayonara, GA, Georgia. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. You all have a Merry Christmas weekend. We'll see you next Thursday night on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. You all have a good night, and uh, peace out. Okay, dude. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll talk